Hey guys, I am back for another installment of Missed Opportunities. Yeah, uh, I know I just did one of these a little while ago, not too long ago, and I am doing another one. I've recently been in a huge Batman Beyond mood, and I went back and I listened to all the commentaries and all the extra features and stuff from all the seasons of Batman Beyond and the movie. And that's not actually as much as it sounds. I think it's two commentaries per season, so that's like six commentaries and then just a, maybe an hour of extra features, if that, over the whole series. And one thing that I've known ever since I started buying these DVDs way back when was that at one point there was an episode that was planned and I don't think this ever became an actual episode. I could be mistaken. It could be that what they talked about ended up just not even a little bit resembling the episode it eventually became and so they didn't actually mention, well, this is the episode that it eventually became. But if it did actually become one of the episodes in the 52 run series or whatever, then uh, I don't know which episode it was. What was originally planned was that over the course of the series, you basically had Dana, who was just kind of the girlfriend. She didn't really serve any purpose beyond that. And unfortunately for her, I guess, Terry was always going off and being Batman instead of being the boyfriend for her. And Glenn Murakami, who eventually became the showrunner for the Teen Titans cartoon, he was uh, one of the producers on the show, and he had an idea. He wanted to do a story that was just, at the end of the day, Terry makes it to one of his dates with Dana. And it's a very nice little uh, episode that just kind of focuses on their relationship. First of all, I think that would have been a really great episode. Because we never got an episode that really focused on the relationship between these two. I know I said in my previous Missed Opportunities episode that these two never really had to fight for their relationship. It was just there from the beginning, and at the end of the series, it was still there. It didn't ever really go through any changes because it wasn't ever really an important part of the series. So I think the idea of Terry has to do all this Batman stuff, but at the end of the day, what's most important to him is making it to this date with Dana. I think that would have been a really great episode. However, Alan Burnett, I believe he was a writer on the show and also a producer, he got this idea, I guess, passed on to him, because when you're working on an animated series, if it's something like Batman Beyond, which is very episodic and it doesn't have to absolutely be done in a certain way some plots can be malleable and can change and it won't affect the rest of the series alan burnett was saying he always thought it was weird how most superheroes just have one girlfriend and they just stick with that girlfriend throughout the entire series or story or whatever now i'm not really sure what he means by this because the only superhero who i can really think of who fits this description is superman himself and even he had Lori Wamaris, Lana Lang, and then Lois Lane eventually. But most other superheroes, like Spider-Man, he's had several girlfriends over the years. Um, but for whatever reason that Alan Burnett thought this, he thought that it would be a really neat idea to have Terry go through all of these trials and tribulations over the course of the episode, and he makes it to Dana's date a little bit late. And not only is Dana angry at him, but she dumps him right there on the spot. Rejected! <laughs> Rejected! And then Terry, in a state of uh, depression, I guess, he goes to his good friend Max, who, if you will recall from watching the show, she knew that he was Batman, and he starts telling her his woes. He's saying, well, Dana dumped me, etc. And apparently, according to the extra features on the DVD, they start making out. You might have guessed that this is the missed opportunity that I am building this video around. Basically, I don't necessarily agree with Alan Burnett saying that all superheroes basically just had the one girlfriend. 
I do think that Terry really should have switched it up a little bit. I said this in the last Missed Opportunities episode, but I just kind of felt at times that Batman Beyond was just a little bit stale. I don't really want to use that word because I really love Batman Beyond, but I felt like at times they really could have amped it up a little bit. And having a sort of ongoing storyline that permeates multiple episodes, I think would have helped the show in abundance. Instead of just having the series be 52 more or less standalone episodes that can be watched out of order, it would have been cool, I think, if you did something kind of crazy, like have Dana dump Terry, and then Terry gets a new girlfriend. Part of this comes down to me thinking that Max was just a little bit more interesting than Dana. I said this in the previous episode that I did about Batman Beyond, but Dana wasn't that interesting of a character. In fact, in the very DVD special features where they talked about this little fiasco, uh, Bruce Tim basically came down and said she was just the nagging girlfriend. She was nothing more. If the creators of the show understand this, then that means that it's pretty much gospel truth. Dana was never very interesting because the creators never seemed to have anything to do with her. Now, I'm not saying that her breaking up with Terry would have made her more interesting, but at the very least, Terry would have then had a relationship with a character in the form of Max, who would have been a little bit more interesting than Dana. And, furthermore, Max already knew that Terry was Batman, so you didn't have to have all of this kind of whiny teenage melodrama like, you're never there for me, why aren't you ever there for me? And Terry can't really explain it because he's Batman. What would have been kind of neat is a character who understands why Terry is never there for her, but maybe on some subconscious level, she's still a little bit upset that he's never there for her, even if she understands why. Now, like I said, this episode never happened because Bruce Tim he got a hold of the script that Alan Barnett wrote, and he was like, no, if you can't do it the way Glenn Murakami wanted it done, then you're not going to do it at all. And, you know, when you hear them talk about this on the extra features, they're very good-natured about it. They didn't sound upset at all. It is what it is, I guess. The series is long over. I do know that Batman Beyond stars in the comics now. He has his very own comic book series. I have never read that. Maybe I need to read that. Maybe it is everything that I wanted the TV show to be. I don't know. That is about all I have to say for this episode of Missed Opportunities. Until then, uh, I know that this came fairly soon after another Batman Beyond Missed Opportunity. Uh, like I say, I've been in a huge Batman Beyond mood. And... I will probably do another Missed Opportunity video in a week-ish, and it will probably be about Batman Beyond. I have one more Missed Opportunity that I really want to get into. I promise you, it is not going to be about Terry and his relationship. It's not going to be, hey, Terry should have dated that blonde, spoiled girl who was kind of sort of Dana's friend. No, I promise I'm not going to say that because that would have been even worse than him dating Dana. That's all I have to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And do all of the other things that you like doing on YouTube videos. Until then, I will catch you guys later.